Hello, I'd like to talk to you today about how to write for publication. There's all sorts of ways you can do this. You can write a whole book, but you don't have to go that far. You could write a guest post for a blog. You could write a chapter for a book or an article for an academic or professional journal. However you want to write, whatever sort of publication you want to write for, you need to start by doing your research on that kind of publication or on that publisher that you might want to publish with. If you want to write a book, then publishers often have little sections on their website called advice for authors or that kind of thing. Uh, they may have a proposal form that you can download that will give you an insight into what sort of information they're looking for to make a decision on whether your book will be the sort of book they want to publish. Similarly, with academic journals and professional journals on their websites, they often have, uh, again, advice for authors or suggestions for authors. You can check that out. And with high profile blogs, again, they quite often have those. Or if not, just look at the style of the blog or look at the style of the academic journal or whatever format you want to publish in and figure out what kind of thing they like, who their audiences are and so on. And then construct your writing to fit that publication or that publisher. You'll need to write at least three drafts. People often think that writers start at the beginning and write all the way till they get to the end and then stop and it's done. That's how we read many books, not how we write. The first draft is to tell yourself the story and it may be very rough and very scrappy. Mine are, don't worry if yours is too. It's all fine, you're creating your raw material that you can then craft into shape for the second draft, which is about how to tell the story to other people. And at this point, if not sooner, you really need to work out who your readers are going to be or imagine who they're going to be. If the publication that you're working for has adverts in it, it's worth looking at those because that can give you a lot of insight into the sort of people who read that publication. If not, you may have to use more imagination, but try and figure it out. Once you've figured out who they are, you can think about what they might need from your writing and how you can best meet those needs in the writing that you do. So then in your second draft, you're working to meet those needs to tell the story to those readers in the way that will work best for them. When you've got a second draft, it's time to look for some feedback, try and find some trusted people, not just people who'll tell you, oh, that's so marvelous. It's always lovely to hear, but it doesn't get you very far. We all need feedback. I've written a whole bunch of stuff in my life and I still want feedback on every new thing I write because I can only go so far on my own and then I need to find out what readers think of it. It's a bit like piloting a new research instrument. You need to test it out on some readers that, who will tell you honestly what they think, what works well for them, what maybe doesn't work so well. It'll help you find things that you can't find on your own. If you find this a bit of a daunting prospect, there is another video on this channel called Dealing with Feedback on Your Writing. I would recommend watching that. And then use that feedback. That video will tell you how to use it, use it well, use it to improve in your third draft. And at that point also, you're really crafting and polishing your text. At the end of that process, I would strongly recommend that you read the whole thing out loud to yourself. It's a really good way of finding clunky sentences, repetitions you wouldn't notice just by reading silently. If reading out loud doesn't work for you for whatever reason, there's other things you can do. You could put it into a different font, style and size, different background color. Uh, if you read on screen normally, you could print it out instead or vice versa, just so that you can get some distance between you and the text, which by now you will be so familiar with. It'll be hard to see those final little errors and don't rely on your spell checker. It's helpful up to a point, but it won't pick up, for example, if you just transpose two letters so that instead of form, you've written from. They're both perfectly correctly spelt words, but clearly one will not make sense in a context where it's supposed to be the other. So there's some meticulous work to writing for publication to get your writing to that standard where other people will agree to publish it for readers. But using these tips will help. And you know what? I kind of think if I can do it, you can do it. Good luck.